What is up, everyone? Today, I wanted to take a minute to talk about CNAP. And one of the first articles I wrote is WTF is ASPM. And that article got quite a bit of buzz around it. Because in that article, I argued that ASPM should be this all-in-one scanning mechanism, where it's looking at all of these different, essentially what are configuration scanners, and different ways to implement them, and it's orchestrating them together into different outcomes that people care about, right? People are tired of managing scanners, so they want something that can provide all of the scanners directly. People are tired of vulnerability management, so anything that can orchestrate and help fix that problem is great. Now, CNAP is honestly something I've avoided for a while because the number of capabilities increases exponentially. Let's actually hop over into this real quick. This is my attempt to map out like every security thing you could want an application security tool to do. So it's starting with like laptops and how you'd protect those into the the SCM itself, the source code management, into the runners and the container registry and the control plane and pods and cloud services, logs, API gateway users. This is just everything that's possible to scan and provide runtime defense with. And what's tough about this is CNAP by definition, right, if we look up Gartner's definition of CNAP, it's basically that it does everything. Secure cloud native applications from development to production. So that that definition of itself is like a just an unbelievable amount of things. And that's made it so it's a lot harder to split this up into ASPM was very clearly these eight different kinds of scanning that you can do. And there's overlap with that and with CNAP. And that's what adds like this whole extra layer of complexity. So I really wanted to break this down more granularly. So this is where I started. Where the first generation of CNAP was really conceived of, if you drop these all off, vulnerability scanning, DS and ASPM, zoom in. Really what we saw was, the example that made it most clear to me was Palo Alto buying Redlock for CSPM and buying Twistlock for CWPP and combining that into one platform on the assumption that scanning the configuration of your cloud via the cloud APIs, because the cloud is just a database or a, a data center with APIs, combining that with a CWPP that could actually provide runtime defense within Linux servers, within Kubernetes, provided some sort of combined application value. And what's interesting about that, and something I argue in the article, WTF is CNAT, is that that combination was really more for vendors trying to drive revenue than it was tied to any specific use case. And that's part of what made this complicated is within here, I've tried to define all of the subcategories of tools where you you had entire tools just for scanning like Windows vulnerabilities as opposed to Linux, as opposed to network vulnerabilities. Network vulnerabilities are something that have been somewhat forgotten about recently. But same with DSPM, right? You have different DSPM tools, you have different CSPM tools, outcomes from CSPM. So like looking at the threat exposure for, uh, to the internet, looking at your identities in the cloud, looking at your runtime defenses, all of your assets in the cloud. Same with CWPP, like there's Kubernetes protection, there's EDR for Windows, EDR for Linux, there's serverless functions, API security, where you're mapping the, the APIs. Really, there's a ton of features getting combined here. And they, they don't even necessarily have the same logs. It's more just like if we're integrating, if we can see every server and we can see every cloud API, what are the use cases we can develop out of that? DSPM was unceremoniously because it's visibility into the databases. And now with these vendors slowly adding in SAS and SCA scanning, they're trying to bet that the future here is AS scanning where you're adding in these different, the eight in one scanner, and that somehow, right, we're supposed to just believe as an industry, like, we did it. They're all together. We've accomplished something. But that's really divorced from both use cases and from end users. So this was like a graph that I made of, and I try not to take this too seriously. I get messages from these guys who I like don't rank highly all the time, and they're upset about it. But honestly, this is just my opinion in general. And this, this graph is not to try to show like who I would pick or who's better. It's to try to show it really the, the question I'm trying to answer is why is Wiz always the one winning? Why are they the ones who have won so much of this market? 
And I really thought for a long time that it was because of the ease of deployment and use, even though they didn't have an endpoint agent, even though they were missing different features, even though they couldn't do like cloud log correlation, they still catapulted because they were so easy to use was what I thought. But as I've thought more about this, what I've really determined is that Wiz came out on top because of this use case where there's a compliance requirement to scan vulnerabilities on all of your assets. And then there's value in combining asset management with vulnerability scanning and doing these things without an agent is really a huge benefit to organizations. So it's not that they just like were easy to use, even though they didn't provide a lot of like, I'll, I'll call EDR, like real security value where you're like granularly stopping attacks. It's the stuff that I love because I love security, but it's not the stuff that drives like compliance and purchases necessarily. But really it's, it's that this was the lowest common denominator of tools you would buy plus the satisfaction in which they did it. So a lot of what I argue is that this graph is actually like the, per, the way to predict the success of a CNAP provider is the number of use cases that they cover over the average satisfaction of the use case. So something that I find really interesting is Wiz is still just absolutely dominating this market, but they have vastly fallen behind the acronym race, right? They don't provide SCA and SAS scanning. They do cloud event alerting, but not as well as some of these other guys. They still provide, they have an endpoint agent now, but it doesn't quite have nearly the robustness of something like Sysdig or Aqua's engines. Same on the bespoke scanners, like Aqua can scan all sorts of stuff, like even pipeline configuration, which Wiz like just added, but it's still very immature. So Wiz, despite like vertically on this checkbox of features, they don't have the most checkboxes, but what they do do, the satisfaction is extremely high and the use case is more prevalent. And so it's not just the number of use cases, but it's also the number of companies that have that use case. So I should also add here like, and number of companies with use case, because then you would see Wiz actually probably more like up here because not every company has Kubernetes or Linux workloads and Sysdig just expanded into Windows, but it's kind of early. Orca, I would then have to move up here as well because of the weight of the workloads where I had Orca down here because they don't have the kind of feature breadth that Wiz does. But honestly, there's less companies looking for some of those more bespoke features, whereas Orca has general feature parity on the most prevalent use cases from Wiz. Prisma has been the prime example of like, we're going to buy vendors to do every single use case that we can. And we're going to rapidly expand into just every use case for complete coverage. But because of that, like a lot of their platforms are barely integrated and barely work well together. So that's generally how I would map this for the purpose of like, who's going to win the market sort of arguments. But the stuff that I care more about is helping security people choose the right product. And really for that, you would create this sort of graph, the ease of use by the real security value for each one of these different tools. And this is part of why I love what I'm doing with the Latio list, because you can see here, like, if I have a lot of APIs and I care about API security, like I should be looking at people like Impart and Levo that are doing some amazing work on like holistic API security scanning more than like, I think even Prisma Cloud has API security as a use case, right? So the evaluation would actually be like Prisma Cloud versus Impart versus Levo. And then Prisma Cloud, part of the things to consider is that Prisma Cloud is also giving me identity scanning, cloud configuration scanning, twist lock uh, inside the cluster. And those different features, if I also care about them and don't already have them covered, then maybe I would consider, then the question becomes, what features am I giving up if I go for Prisma or if I go for Levo or Impart? What am I losing by choosing them over choosing Prisma because I'm gaining these extra features even though they're not as mature? So really, I think what's more important is to define like what your technology stack is and what security tools give you the right amount of coverage based on your technology stack. 
And so most of my work is like Kubernetes serverless stuff. So it's no surprise that the vendors that I love are those that are holistically focusing on Kubernetes security, as well as those who are focused on holistic application security. Because for me, this is 100% of my use cases, right? Like if I'm scanning the code and configuration and I'm doing runtime defense of the cluster, I have almost 100% security protection. But if I have a hybrid cloud environment across multiple clouds with like Windows servers, Linux servers, all sorts of a giant mess of stuff, and then I also have like five to 15 existing scanners, it's going to change the way that I approach this problem where suddenly people like Ox and Psycode and Apiro and legit security and JIT who can integrate with a lot of other scanners, those guys are going to be more appealing to me because I have this existing problem they're helping me to solve. Whereas if I have a greenfield deployment, Arnica, Aikido, Zygeni, Backslash, these guys are going to appeal a lot more to me for trying to provide all of my scanning in a single place. And really it's that use case division that comes up to this weird requirements thing I was coming up against because of the, a question of discussion that I was coming a lot about with this was, especially with Kubernetes context, there's a lot of value, it seems, for image scanning, right? So I'm scanning the container images, and the runtime context of those images provide a lot of value for reducing noise from them. So I know like what's executing, how to reduce noise. Similarly, it can sometimes be helpful to know what vulnerabilities exist on a container so that I can uh, create alerts based on what I'm seeing from activity from those alerts. Same with, with this use case with API, right? Where DAST, it can be useful to have some WAF functionalities and it can be useful to build WAF rules around what the DAST is detecting. So this overlap of configuration and runtime protection develops more as companies attack use cases. And what's super interesting to me is that this is a use case driven approach, but then there's the end user driven approach where there's no overlap, I would argue, because a developer is never going to care about like container runtime alert. There's nothing, the, the security operations team is gonna get that alert. They're gonna triage it. They're gonna figure out what caused it. They're gonna deal with the attack by killing the network connection, doing forensics. And then once the forensics is completed, that turns in to a developer alert later. But having these two things in the same tool doesn't provide any value, right? If I get an alert from an API exploit, like from a WAF that someone is running a DOS attack to make it something really simple, it's my job to figure out and work with developers, like how can we prevent that? But the fact that like I have a SaaS tool scanning for DOS vulnerabilities, that doesn't provide any value this way to the operations team. The, the cross just doesn't happen. And so really what I think is smart for companies trying to build is it's such a complicated thing to focus both on the, what I'll call the outcomes that you're looking for, which sometimes require different use cases, right? So an outcome, for example, API security. And then for you're gonna, if your outcome is we want secure APIs, you need a tool to engage developers, and that's going to be your DAST. That's going to be your. That's going to be some documentation stuff, like building API docs. Like that's going to be the developer stuff. But then you're also going to have to do some SecOps stuff, and that's going to be like your WAF, like your Raspi, like your eBPF agents. And so I bring this up because if I'm an API security company, this is why most companies I see either build this. And they're building like a DAS scanner that builds documentations or they build this, which is like, we're going to build a, something to detect and mitigate WAF threats. And th that's like the MVP, right? So I think the MVP should be user focused because you have to have like a clear, the light, the user's approach. But then as you expand beyond the MVP, you're expanding out into this more outcome that's holistic. And what you have to be just really careful about is it's all going to come down to can you delight both of these people in the same platform? And that if you don't do this, then you're going to totally just fumble because breathing down your neck is the CNAP provider. And the CNAP provider is already saying and marketing that they do this. 
And so you have to do this outcome fundamentally better than they do it. And being better than them means that you're delighting both of these people and you're delighting them more than the CNAP. So they're going to get angry faces. And this is how I see churn happen in the industry, right? This, this should make sense where people get fed up with whatever CNAP tool they've bought and then they move to a new tool that's better at the outcome once it's more narrowly defined. So this has been really helpful for me to think about when I'm looking at all these tools, what am I really looking at? Like it is just a mess out there. And it, I think it helps explain why the like Gartner graphs and stuff are so rough to look at because who's going to win the market graph is very different than like, what tool should I buy? Even just to, to put these boxes more, you could make this chart for users, types of users or outcomes. And just to show that like, I'm not biased against these guys as much as the ones that I rank lowly wouldn't like if you're building something for you love Kubernetes, you're mostly Kubernetes, you have a very advanced security team that's focused on DevOps work. Sysdig is a no brainer for you. If you're a security team that's overwhelmed with the cloud that needs a lot of visibility, you have compliance requirements. Wiz is a no brainer for you. If you're have that same use case, you're comparing Wiz against Orca. And it's going to come down to how you approach like cost, GUI, workflow, that sort of thing. If you're a pretty advanced developer team that's in this space and you're more focused on like open source type projects, Aqua is going to be super appealing. They have great open source scanners that honestly power like almost everything on this list because everybody steals their stuff. And if that's the kind of thing that you care about, then yeah, you should support Aqua. Lacework, if you have a very SOC focused approach to cloud security, they're going to be great because their whole thing is rolling up alerts that are firing. Like basically in Lacework's conception of things, everything is an alert. And so it's a good way to manage all of your cloud detection response type of stuff in a single place. I just happen to think Sysdig generally does some of the details of that, that I care more about in a better way for me because I love the Kubernetes stuff. But if I was less Kubernetes focused, I'd have to do an evaluation between these two. And then Prisma Cloud, uh, they, the number of use cases they cover is unparalleled. And so if that's the kind of thing that matters to you is like, I only want one vendor to do all this stuff. I don't want to waste any more time with it. Yeah, that's going to be the use case for them. So that's what I mean when each of these has a different end user and they also have different personas they're delighting. Wiz is a delight for security compliance team. Sysdig is a delight for DevOps teams. Same way, Orca, delight for the compliance teams, sorry, and security teams. Lacework is a delight for security operations. And Prisma is a delight for executives, really, I guess. So all that to say, that's how I see this stuff developing. And really what I think CNAP should become is it the useless acronym because it's an acronym fundamentally for vendors and not for end users. So these are the use cases that I think we should focus on the most. And you should narrow down your search for security tools into trying to tackle one of these problems at a time. If you buy a CNAP tool, you're kind of also running into this issue of like, I'm going to do everything at once. Like, I'm going to have the best vulnerability scanning. I'm going to protect Kubernetes. I'm going to have a SOC. I'm going to have API security. Like this is too much to try to check, tackle at the same time. So even if it sounds nice that a CNAP is doing all of these things, like just really focus on one at a time. And I suggest in the article a few ways to go through it. But fundamentally, you, you really need to understand the problem you're trying to solve before you try to pick a vendor just because they all say that they do all of this. So I hope with this video... I have made a lot of vendors upset because I said stuff that they do and don't like. But more importantly, this has been really clarifying to me to, to think that the problem's not me. The problem is CNAP being such like a useless hodgepodge of functionalities that are more focused on like helping vendors try to win customers than it is like helping people think through use cases. That's fundamentally where I'm at. And that honestly, my the way I would approach adopting this stuff is just use case by use case, and then maybe ending up at the end of the day with a CNET. So I hope that this was helpful. Thank you. <laughs>